Hi everyone, today we will see how to enable, configure and use the smart recording support which is available in EntopNG and EntoDisk. Those of you who are familiar with EntopNG and EntoDisk already know that you can enable continuous traffic recording in EntopNG and this is using EntoDisk which is a software who takes care of recording network traffic as raw packets in pickup format to disk. This happens continuously uh, using a time window like uh, a camera so the traffic is continuously recorded to disk and when the disk size is reached then the oldest traffic is deleted to make room for the new traffic. In order to do this, you can go under the interface details select the traffic recording icon and enable the continuous traffic recording. Here you can select what is the maximum space on disk that you want to use for pickup data. You can apply a BPF filter and this is where the pickup files will be recorded. After this you just save the settings and this will enable the service. This will allow you to go for instance to the interface chart, select a time interval and download the traffic in pickup format which is matching this selected interval using this button. So we can click here and extract the traffic. We can even apply some filter like host and port for instance. We can apply and download the pickup file that we can analyze with Wireshark for instance. So this allows us to drill down from traffic visibility and OpenG up to the packet level. We can do the same for instance for alerts. So we can go in the alerts explorer. Here we are in the flow alerts page and we can select a specific alerts, go to the action button and download the pickup file. This will extract the traffic matching this specific alert from the dump set, so from the pickup data that EntoDisk recorded on disk. Now, before talking about the smart recording, let's take a look at how the continuous recording works. So in essence here we have EntoDisk, which is receiving traffic from a network interface coming from a mirror port of a switch, a spam port or a tap, for instance, and continuously dumping this traffic to disk. This is implemented by using a window that allows us to handle the data retention. Let's see how this works. Let's assume that we just started our end to disk service to record the traffic in pickup format to disk. So here the data is coming, is flowing, so end to disk is dumping the data to disk more data is coming, so we are starting creating pickup files on disk and filling the disk. At some point, EntoDisk reaches the maximum window size that we configured, so the maximum space to be used on disk that we configured, for instance, through EntopNG. What happens is that if more data is coming, then the oldest data is deleted to make room for the new data. So this window is a sliding window which is moving forward. Now let's assume that we have some event that EntopNG detected. For instance, the flow alert that we have seen before. If we want to drill down in EntopNG and download the pickup data matching this event, we can use the user interface as we have seen 
and we can download the data. This data is extracted from disk and we have pickup data available on disk so we can extract the data and analyze it with Wireshark. Now we have seen that this is a sliding window so after some time this can be minutes, hours, days depending on the data retention allowed by our disk, the disk size versus the traffic rate this data may be no longer available so at the time that we analyze the traffic with AnthropNG and we want to drill down and download the pickup, it may be that the pickup data for the event that we are analyzing is no longer available. Now let's talk about the smart recording. With the smart recording, we wanted to change a little bit the architecture, splitting the storage into two levels. A first level storage that we call cache and a second level storage that we call the archive. The idea is to continuously record the data in the first level storage as we do today with n disk but when we have some event which is triggered by NTOPNG for instance or by third party applications like an IDS we want to move the pickup data matching the events to a second level storage the second level storage can have a much higher retention, much bigger window, because the traffic, the pickup data matching the events will require much less disk than the total traffic. Let's see an example. So here we just started our end to disk service. So end to disk starts filling the cache, the first level storage with the full traffic that we see on the network. Here more traffic is flowing, an event is coming for instance, so here we can use NTOPNG to drill down up to the packet level by extracting the traffic from the storage. Then our smart recording service is moving the pickup traffic matching network events to a second level storage that we called archive. So we can drill down from NTOPNG and get the traffic for the event both from the first level storage and the second level storage. More traffic is flowing, the sliding window implemented in the cache is moving forward because he reached the maximum window size so the oldest data is deleted and the Smart recording service is keeping updating the archive with network events. At some point, this sliding window is moving forward a little bit more, so the traffic, the pickup data matching the event, is no longer available in the cache, but this is still available in the archive because, as we said, this archive contains just pickup data matching the events and even with the same space on disk can be used to implement a much bigger window. So here if we go into OpenG, select a flow alert for instance and we want to download the traffic matching that flow alert even if the data is not available in the first level storage anymore because it has been deleted this is still available in the archive. Later on, that can be after hours, days or, or even weeks, the archive still contains the pickup data matching the event. Of course this depends on the disk space that we dedicate to the second level storage and the number of events that we receive, so the amount of traffic that is moved to the archive. Obviously also, the second level storage has a maximum window size depending on the space that we configure. So after some time, the oldest data in the archive is also deleted to avoid filling the disk. So let's see how to enable the smart recording in NTOPNG. If we go back to the NTOPNG user interface, and we go under the interface details menu and select the traffic recording. 
Here we can enable the smart continuous traffic recording, select what is the maximum disk space that we can use for the smart recording data and save the settings. This will enable the smart traffic recording service. Now on this system we enabled the smart recording service a few days ago and we can go under the status page and check what is the actual window that this service is using. So we can see that the window for the continuous recording is much smaller than the smart window. So for instance here we have data from May 9th, here we have data from April 30. Now if we go to the flow alerts, if we select for instance as time interval yesterday which is out of the traffic recording window but it's still inside the smart traffic recording window we will see that we are still able to download pickup traffic matching network events because the smart recording is keeping the data for the events so we can go here and download the pickup file Then we can use Wireshark to analyze this pickup file and drill down up to the packet level for troubleshooting or providing evidence of a security issue. Obviously, we can do the same with charts. So we can drill down from charts to network traffic, which is matching a time interval which is out of the dump window, but it's still inside the smart recording window. Of course, when we will download this traffic, we will be able to download only the traffic matching network events. Thank you for watching. See you to the next tutorial.